Greetings, sports fans. I'm Funky Monkey. And I'm Brian Monkfish. Welcome to another Funky Monkey's House of Love. This time we're taking a look back at the 1980 Animal Olympics. Funky. Yes, Brian. 1980 was an historic year, as the decade that spawned the home computer and the resulting software and gaming industries, and gave us Ronald Reagan's presidency of the United States of America, also spanned my earliest years, from babe in arms to free-thinking ten-year-old. None of which has anything to do with today's subject, but I do so love to wax lyrical about the 80s. <laughs> Originally airing on pay-per-view in 1980, Animal Olympics was conceived as a series of short vignettes to be shown alongside US coverage of the 1980 Olympic Games. Though producer Steven Lisberger, who would go on to direct Tron, had always intended a feature-length release. The main story is twofold, being the adventures of skier Kurt Wuffner and the epic romance between two marathon runners in a mixed gender event. And it's straight over to Brian Monkfish as we recap the events of the 1980 Animal Olympics. Brian. And straight off, we're into the punishing 3.5 megameter marathon, as African lioness Kit Mumbo and France's goat go getter Renee Fromage go head to head. And over in the gymnastics arena, Tatiana Cheshenko wows the critics with a near-perfect floor display. Ah, Tashenko. A pity she burned out in the late 90s. Though she seems to be doing better these days from what I've heard. But the uneven bar event proves unfortunate for Soviet hope Ludmilla Stepanyatova. Heavy? The result? Orbital velocity! Back in the marathon, Fromage and Mambo continue their battle. While over in the ice rink, the Soviet Tohil and Dane, the Krulinovs, perform their latest routine. But if the figure event was anyone's that year, it was grasped tight in the feathers of US starlet Dory Turnell. Dory Turnell? Didn't she go on to manage 90s US starlet Nancy Kedigree? Yes, she did. Very perceptive. In the high jump, Bolt Jenkins is the crop to beat. Especially when things take a turn for the worse for Soviet champion Boris Amfibiensky. But in the 100 meters, Jenkins magnanimously gives his gold to Africa's Kit Nagogo. You see that? That's the kind of thing that slow mo was invented for. It'd never happen nowadays. Oh, really? Well, what about Sanka Spigot and Caprica Ronyova in the 2016 Animal Olympics, hmm? Back in the marathon, love rears its ugly head as Fromage and Mambo warm to one another. And now the moment Brian's been waiting for, the footy! And there's the trip that launched a thousand inquiries. Ooh, looks like the Wolves. In the next match, West Germany's Hundenschaft beat the Llamas 2-1. But now it's time to focus on the other big story of these games, the dis and reappearance of Kurt Wuffner. After a stunning 51-second masterclass in the slalom, he was reported missing on Pike's Peak. Things aren't much better for Team GB in the bobsledding. But the Italian team fare better. But Wuffner was alive, and out in the mist, he claims to have found Dogrela. Oh yeah, I heard about this. Spent the rest of his day searching for it, as I recall. These days you can find most of these semi-mythical places on Gplex maps. Back on the ice, it's a punishing ice hockey match. I'm just glad they brought in the Zurich conventions in 84. Back in warmer climbs, America's Dean Wilson rules the pool. For sure! But it's time for the downhill skiing, and still no Wuffner. Oh, but there he is! There he is with a triumphant entrance, snatching the gold! Over at the boxing ring, 
Joey Gongolong outdances Janis Brustekel to take the gold. And the weightlifting is no less exciting, as the new Mr. Heavyweight is crowned. But it pales in comparison to the fencing. Funky. Poor Duke Shardis is no match for Maurice Bordeaux. But shock! Contessa appears. And handily serves the Gallic Grunter. Brian. Thanks, Funky. And as the marathon reaches its climax, it's a dead heat. So that was Adam Olympics. And? Is it worthy of your house of love? Oh, it's more than worthy, Brian, old thing. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that the house of love was made for forgotten gems like this. This animated movie is my childhood. The animation, being of course that it's from outside the big two, is fluid and expressive. The comedy greats that are Harry Shearer and the late Gilda Radner, and of course the delightful Billy Crystal, perform a variety of skits, impersonations and accents to bring the myriad personalities of the Zoo TV sports crew and the Animal Olympians themselves to life. Most notable to my ears was Keen Hacksaw, whose voice would reappear several times during Shearer's Simpsons tenure as various sports announcers and sportscasters. And I can't have been the only one to notice the Muhammad Ali impersonation gag that was Joey Gongolong. Although the flow, if one can talk of such a thing, is necessarily disjointed, as this 74 minute special cobbles together several disparate events from both a summer and winter Olympic Games, with only the threads of the marathon and Wuffner's mountain misadventures forming any kind of overarching narrative, adding in of course the comedy named Foreigners, which are remarkably un-PC in the modern era, and suddenly what was such a childhood delight seems rather problematic to my adult eyes. But as disjointed and as of its time as it is, Animal Olympics is still a great watch, not least for the sparkly backlight effects that Lisberger Studios would put to such great effect in their next picture, The Legendary Tron, and for the voice talents of comedy greats and genuine legends. And of course for Graham Gouldman's wonderful score, with its many standout pieces, including my personal favourite, Z.O.O, which serves as a title theme for the movie. Overall then, it's a gold medal for Team Lisberger, as the Animal Kingdom give their best. Well, that was fun. Yep, good times all around. So for Brian Monkfish, I have been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks.